Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Paul Lagosha, God's doing a new thing. God's doing a new thing in your life. Hallelujah. I just get that Scripture in Isaiah. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past for I am doing a new thing. I'm doing a new thing. Hallelujah. And I just see like that surfer would take hold of that surfboard and the waves of the Spirit are going to rise and you're going to surf. Hallelujah. And the Spirit and you're going, going to go further than you ever would have dreamed or thought of. Just see the Lord opening up your spiritual eyes and God's going to give you some strategies and keys that are going to unlock prison doors in people's lives. Hallelujah, glory, glory, praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Bill and Sharon, I just see that, Lord, the wind of refreshing is just blowing upon you. God is just refreshing you, refreshing you. He's taking away all the, all the debris of the things of, of people's problems and things that have encumbered you. He's releasing you and setting you free and He's just refreshing you. He's giving you strength. I just see new strength rising up within you. New strength, hallelujah. The power of God is a mighty force to break the strength of the enemy this morning. Glory, glory to the Lord, hallelujah. Oveal, the Lord says, son, I have not forgotten about you. Even though a mother may forget about her baby, I will not forget about you. For I have engraved you on the palm of my hands. Your walls are ever before me. And Oveal, I just see the Lord just comforting you, just drawing you closer to His heart. He's just ministering His love. I just see Him pouring His love into your emotions this morning. And He's just giving you peace. He's giving you peace. He's giving you peace. And this new resurrection life rising up within you this morning. Glory, glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And Luke, I just see God's just doing an awesome work on the inside. It's an inside. I just see like He's taking you into the, like a spiritual operating theatre and He's operating on the inner parts on the inside. And you're going to come out. You're going to come out of that recovery time. You're going to come out of that time of, of uh, healing and restoration. And God's going to put a new sound inside of you. And God's going to raise up the new kid on the block. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God's going to use you mightily for His glory. Hallelujah. Where's Hannah this morning? Hannah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. The very areas, Hannah, that you were wounded in. God's going to give you authority and power over those very things. And you're going to see many captives set free. You're going to see deliverances. Hallelujah. God is taking you to new levels. It's a, I just hear a new sound. There's a new sound that's coming out of you. Glory to God. And it's going to shatter the strongholds. It's going to bring those religious spirits down. And you're going to be a woman that's going to worship the Lord. And your worship is going to go beyond the four walls. And you're going to see drug addicts delivered. You're going to see strongholds broken. You're going to see witchcrafts broken. Hallelujah. The power of God is a mighty force to break the strength of the enemy. And family members, you're going to see delivered. You're going to see family members coming out of the back sabbaticals, out of the back burners. And you're going to see family members reinstated in the body of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Who's on Zoom this morning? Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Chris, I just see that God's touching you this morning. You're a man of peace. You're a man of kindness. And you've sown seeds. And you're going to see those seeds sprouting up in the lives of people. You're going to see generations change because you've committed your life to the Lord. God is going to bring about changes and He's going to bring peace in areas. There's been some struggles, there's been some battles, but God's coming in to bring peace. He's coming in to release you and to lift you up. I just see the Lord lifting your feet up and He's causing you to come closer to Him. And He's calling, Son, come closer, come closer, come closer. And I just see as you come closer, God's going to give you revelation truth. He's going to give you a revelation of the things that you've been crying out for. He's going to reveal His heart. I just see the Father heart is going to reveal Himself to you and you're just going to have a revelation of the Daddy's love, of Abba Daddy's love. You're going to have a revelation of who God is and what He means to you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Rochelle, I just see the Lord taking your hand. He's saying, daughter, come up higher. Come up higher. Come out of the storms. Come out of those places that would hold you down. Come up higher. And I'm going to show you new things, says the Lord. I'm going to bring your whole family out of the places that they're in now. I'm going to take them into the new place. 
I'm going to do awesome things that you never would have known. I'm going to move mightily. I'm going to move beyond your four walls and even your loved ones. I'm going to bring deliverances, says God. Even those ones that are bound, oppressed, tormented, sick and lame, I'm going to bring them out. I'm going to bring them out with a shout, with a joy, with a song, says God. I'm going to cause victory and breakthrough to come. And I'm going to answer your prayers and I'm going to answer your cries. For I'm bringing you into a new season, says God. I'm bringing you into a place that you've never been in before. And I'm going to cause you to dance. The winter is over and the rains have gone. And the season of singing has come. Hallelujah. And I'm just sensing in this place, there's a lot of people you've been going through a winter season, like spiritually. And, and the, in, in Songs of Solomon, it says the winter is over and the rains have gone and the season of singing has come. Hallelujah. It's a new day. It's a new hour. God is getting ready to do awesome things. And I just see where there's been a rock of reproach. That rock of, of reproach is getting moved. And there's been people that uh, have ostracised some people in this place. God is getting ready to bring change in those areas where people feel they've been ostracised and it's like people are going through battles. There's someone going through and it's like an inner turmoil, an inner battle and you haven't been able to talk about it. God's heard your prayers and He's going to move on your behalf. Hallelujah. God is going to bring divine intervention in your life and you are going to see the goodness of God because He's an awesome God and He's a mighty God and He shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Anyone, uh, anyone here got something during the worship? Just make it short. Don't, don't preach the gospel of Jesus Christ here. Amen. Just a quick. Yeah. Thanks, Mandela. Anyone got something this morning? I'm talking about this morning here, not last week, but your water. Glory. Um, <laughs> yes, yes. The Lord, Lord said to me during worship that. Um, it's a new day, it's a new time, it's a new season. And, and hang on, I'll just go at the front, I feel yeah. awful here. <laughs> oh, that's better, I don't feel so cramped. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, the Lord said it's a new day, it's a new time and it's a new season. It's time to step, step out of the boat and walk upon the water. And I also got that your winter is over and spring has come and it's time for or singing. So really get in and praise the Lord because the Lord's wanting to draw very, very near, near to us. Um, and, and I also got, uh, it's Isaiah 43, forget the former things, do not remember the things of old, for I am doing a new thing. Do you not perceive and know it? I will make rivers in the desert and a road through the wilderness. Is that on? Is that um, Ken, Ken, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I just saw during the thing Ken. Sorry? What did I do wrong? Nothing yet. You'll find out now. Yeah. And you being building, you'll get this analogy. I just saw the mic. I just saw a house there, which is you. You know, we're all a house. We're a temple of the Holy Spirit. <coughs> oh, sorry. But it had all this scaffolding around. Now these days you've got to have around houses scaffolding or what have you for safety issues. But often, you know, it's, we can't get out. There's too much scaffold there that it traps us inside the building. I just see that's like you. And God's going to start tearing this scaffold down. He's going to open you up, expose your heart, I guess, you know. Yes. <laughs> I'm scared. It's happening all the time with me, I tell you. And, um, but it's necessary. And what's going to come out of that is going to be wonderful. Amen. So as, this, as I said, all these protective barriers that we tend to build up in our lives are just going to come falling down at your feet. You, a lot of it you won't even realise it. A lot of some you'll have to struggle through, of course, as we all do. But God's doing a great work in you. And he will finish what he starts. Um, Belinda, I just saw 
Now, just a bit of background. Belinda and I have had a fair bit to do with each other since Christmas. She's my show for now. When, um, when I have to go somewhere and the kids can't drive me, so she kindly drives me around everywhere. And we've been having some great conversations. And out of that, I just saw this morning, you, Belinda, you know, because I, I know a bit of your background and your history and things like that. But I just saw you presenting to a people group that have got the same sort of thing, been through the same sort of issues, things like that. God's going to bring these people around you. And you'll be able to bring them into the kingdom because your experience. You have a great heart for people, which we all know anyway, you know, but you have a great heart. But with this people group that you're going to interact with, you're going to set them free. It's the power of God that does it, of course, but because of who you are and what you've been through, it's going to have a tremendous impact on a lot of people's lives. Um, Angelo, I just when you walked in there in your cute little blue ja uh, yellow jacket, yeah, I know. I'm going colour blind. Um, I just got this thing. I was talking to Bill this morning, which is not unusual, but it's like he he mentioned this scripture. Um, what was it? Colossians nine. One. One nine, and <clears throat> to start it off, it talks about a lot about wisdom and understanding and knowledge. And I know that's a big thing with you. I believe that you know you like understanding. You're probably a lot like me. You like to understand things. That's the engineer, and it's like Bill bangs me over all the head all the time, around the head all the time. You don't have to understand everything. I said I like to read the end of the book first, so I do need to, <laughs> I do need to understand it. But I just saw you flicking through the Bible, you know, trying to get stuff, trying to get stuff, trying to understand it all. And it's like God's saying, just sit back and put your feet up. Just rest in him and he'll start to make it happen for you. Because I know, you know, you've got all these aspirations and things like that that you want to do. But it's in his time. We can't force it. We can't push it. Believe me, I've, if we could, I'd find a way. But it's like, you know, just, just relax in God. And with your indulgence, if you don't mind. If you've got a word, just give it to us. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, um, one more. Just in worship, um, I could see Jesus' nail pierced hands and he was putting both of his hands on top of mine. And then um, as Hannah was singing that last song, we're in his embrace, his nail pierced hands was touching my cheeks and he's just embracing us. I just feel like he just wants to embrace us in his love this morning. Wow, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Send my hand. Uh, Bill, quickly, Bill, just a couple of people, that's all. And then we'll finish. Get, take communion because he got a lot on today. Just the word I had for the congregation was just to let go. Um, so often, even as we're maturing in the Lord, we get sharper and wiser, but too often we're still hanging on to things in life. And uh, just in Philippians, it, you know, it says pray about everything, tell God all your needs, and that peace that surpasses all understanding will guard our hearts and our mind. And, and that's something I shared with David this morning, to receive that peace that surpasses all understanding. We need to give up the right to understand. Because if we don't give up that right, and it's our will to give it up, if we don't, we can't receive it. Very good, amen. And it's like we're this head banging. Mm. I need to know, and we need to surrender like little children. <laughs> so you're looking at Angela. Are you? <laughs> looking at David. I promise. <laughs> That's what he sounds like. I need to know. <laughs> So just, I just feel for all of us, you know, just there's always things getting trapped in our heart and we need to guard it before too long. And we're starting to wrestle with life and situations and 
and before we know it, we're starting to hinder the Lord in his will and we just got to let it go. Like little children, I don't know, but God does and I just surrender. And even that scripture I get now that he will make a way where there is no way. Amen. And so we need to come into situations in our life to experience that promise that we have to come to a place that there will be no way. And once we're in that place, that promise can come to come to pass that we, okay, God will move because he said he will make a way. So that's the word. Amen. You got a couple of words for somebody? Just quick words, yeah. Um, yeah just uh, for Beverly. Um, David mentioned before about uh, knowledge and, and spiritual wisdom and understanding and and we have the understanding of this world and these things, like being a nurse and all the things that come with that, and there's an understanding. Um, but God's bringing you into a place of spiritual wisdom. You have a degree of it, but there's a struggle because we've got to let go of all the things that we know and come into this place. And if you cry out, which I believe you have, God, show me your glory, and he is. But that, that process is letting go of everything we know and coming into an understanding of God. So, so I see for you. Um, uh, words. Barry, um, in the, uh, Prophet Jeremiah said, you know, God said to him, you know, he said, oh, I'm too young. And he said, don't say that. And it's like, when we get older, we've got to be careful in our hearts sometimes. I'm too old, Lord. And I see the Lord has something for your future that you've just got to guard your heart, not to say that I'm... I saw it's like you're going to snowboard, and not in the natural, but you're going to go to a high place, put on a snowboard on a steep cliff, and at that place you would say, Lord, I'm too old for this, you know, and it's not that, but God has something spiritually for you so dynamic, like you were snowboarding in the natural. And at that point, as God starts to reveal it, you've got to discard that heart and not say, Lord, I'm too old for that. And that's for all of us as well, so... Um, I've had a word for David and I've sort of shared it with him privately but I kind of felt the Lord wanted to release this today over him and, um, and I've had it and I've kind of seen it in his life and God just gave me this word that he is a minister of reconciliation and uh, there's a Bible verse that says we're not to be ministers of condemnation but ministers of reconciliation and I see you David, God has been transforming you and changing you and you're going to be equipped and, and, and have a spiritual ability to be able to reconcile people back to God. And whether they're believers or unbelievers, wherever they are, you're going to have an understanding that comes from him, be able to get that people, people and remove all the strongholds and struggles and reconcile them back to God. And it's almost you will be known as a minister of reconciliation. Amen. Wow, praise God. Amen. You want to stand up? We'll take communion. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That's awesome words. Just meditate and ponder on those words. Sometimes the word, if it was not given personally to you, you can still receive it. Amen? Even when Yara came out here, there was powerful words that came out of her. You need to receive it and believe that God, God can break every chain. He can move the mountains. Uh, there is no devil that cannot be beaten. There is no loss that cannot be turned into a victory. Amen? And there is no mountain that cannot be moved. Father, we just come, Lord. We join our faith together, Lord. We come boldly to the throne of grace right now, Lord. Namasuri alakishandana, Lord, because you made a way, Lord, through your broken body, Lord. We do this in remembrance, Lord, that you took every curse, every negative thought, every negative word, Lord. Lord, everything deep down in our lives as we open up our hearts to you, Lord. Lord, you said, let a man examine his heart, Lord. Lord, you know our hearts, you know our thoughts, you know our actions. Lord, you know things, Lord God, we have done and said and even thought of, Lord. Today, Lord God, we come humbly before you, Lord. Humbly before you, Rama Seremani Oshana, Holy Ghost, that you will reveal, Father, and we give you permission to pluck out, to pull out, Lord God, to uproot, Lord, everything, Lord, and, and heal the broken hearts in this place on Zoom and beyond Zoom, on YouTube right now, Lord. Lord, heal those broken hearts. God is healing somebody right now. You can feel like a river is just flowing. The tears are just flowing off you. That's God is healing your heart. You have looked to Jesus. As we held this bread, we do this in remembrance of him. As you look to him, because he took it all on Calvary. 
It cannot be that sorrow, that sadness, it cannot be in two places at the same time. It's on Jesus right now. Just believe by faith every sickness, disease, every weakness, every condemnation and guilt right now. We release it. Even, even things, uh, even the small little foxes, the gossip, the slander, the criticism, the conspiracies, you know, things that people even come and speak to you. Just let it go. Don't, don't have an opinion about, it, about anyone. Just have an opinion about Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that he will be always on your mind and no one else. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We believe that, Lord, as we eat together, Lord, we receive everything that Calvary has purchased to for us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, as we hold this cup together, Lord, the greatest cup, Lord, the royal cup, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah, the royal blood, Lord. We do this in remembrance, Lord, that what can wash my sins away? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Just trust in the power of his broken body and his blood today, church, and you will be set free. If you believe with your heart that Jesus died, there are some listening to me right now, you're not sure about your salvation, just ask God to reveal it to you right now, that he shed his blood to wash every sin away. The guilt, the stain, the pain, the past right now. God is healing people right now. Your body parts are being healed. You feel like something just left you in the name of Jesus. That sickness is leaving you. That pain is leaving you. That rejection, that abandonment is leaving you right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we celebrate the victory of Calvary as we drink together. All right. So don't forget the, um, the meetings, church, um, every day from 6 to 7.30. Try and tune in on Zoom. We're on Zoom. We get, we get about, if you count the women and children, we probably get about 40, sometimes even 50. Amen. We count the women, children, if they have any dogs and cats, I mean, they're all getting anointed and being healed. You don't have to go to the wet with your dog and cat. There is healing in the house of the Lord, amen. It's interesting how Zoom have taken us right into your home, right into your lounge room. Some of them are probably on their bed, they switch on. Hey, they don't put the camera on, amen. Could they have not washed their face in the morning, probably, or I don't know, brushed their teeth or whatever it is. But it doesn't matter. Just be in tune with what God is doing, church. There is unbelievable signs, wonders, and miracles that are taking place uh, every day, every day. Yesterday was awesome, every day. I, you, you, I will have to take three hours to share what happened yesterday. It was just outstanding. Every, God moves. Don't come with a plan because God has got a plan. Amen. We don't come. Yara and I just come in there and uh, we not, on Saturdays we're there at uh, 9 o'clock. The others are there from 6. We're having a break on Saturday. Is that all right with you guys? Yeah. You know, after a long time, we didn't even have a holiday church. Although we're taking one. Every three months we try and get three or four days off. But for 20 odd years, I think we never even had a proper holiday. But now we're just taking some time off, okay? Just pray for us as well while we are holidaying. Don't be jealous. <laughs> so try and tune in for that. And also, uh, uh, well, thank you everybody who's been supporting us, particularly during this time, because we have been able to pay the bills, amen? So uh, you need to give your tithes and offerings because you will be blessed, amen? Giving to God. I was talking to a businessman. He said he's got the principle of tithing. He knows. He knows you've got to plant a seed to receive a harvest. Is that strange? Even, even, even a person out there in the world knows that if a farmer don't plant a seed, he has no, no crop, isn't it? Is that Bethany? Wow. Welcome, Bethany. <laughs> Welcome, my daughter too. Cammy is here and the, my grandchildren as well. <laughs> um, yes, so try and somebody like to come quickly and pray for the tithes and offerings too, please. Thanks, sir. I'll pray for the tithes and offerings. 
get your money out, people, quick. <laughs> Father God, we just come before you, Lord, and we just thank you for the opportunity to give, Father God. As Pastor said, we just lay this seed down, Father God, for your kingdom's sake. We pray that your kingdom will be established in our hearts and in our finances, Father God, as we give to you. We pray a blessing over this church, Father God. Mm. We just pray a blessing over Lord of the Breakthrough and the mission and the statement that we're standing for, Father God. I just break the spirit of poverty and lack of everybody, Father God. Hallelujah. God, Amen. I've even remembered, God, that mm. man, that his child died, God, drowned. And he went into the prayer closet and all he said is, Father, I'm a tither. I'm a tither. I'm a tither. And his son came back to life. Hallelujah. Father God, we just Glory. take the tithe Amen. and we establish mm. Because a tithe is a covenant, Father God. So when we say we tithe, we're saying we're in covenant. So we are healed, we are delivered, we are rich, we are prosperous, we are blessed, we are the head and we are not the tail, mm. Father God. We just declare that our vats and our barns and our bank accounts are full in the name of Jesus. I break every lying mindset of poverty and lack. I break every lie of the enemy, God. We bless mm. these tithes and we bless that it will go into nations in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Glory, glory, glory. Thank you. Wow, what an awesome prayer. I'd like to hear that testimony again. That's awesome testimony, isn't it? There's so many testimonies on tithes and offerings. You know we don't spend about half an hour talking about tithes and offerings. Amen. You better give it with a grateful heart and a cheerful heart and God will bless you. It's so simple. Amen. Um, no amen, so that one. <laughs> All right, we got something different today. Okay, we're having the barbecue. Please stay back and have fellowship with us. It's a barbecue is good, but it's a fellowship that is more important. Amen. Not socializing, but fellowship. So, so, socializing gets us into trouble. <laughs> You'll work that out one day. Get up in the middle of the night. Amen. Watch the conspiracies. You know, people go around and say things, you know particularly about the pastors, mm. Mm. and roast them. Don't talk about anyone, your pastor, your, your father, your mother, particularly parents, church. You, you need to obey and honor, even if they were the worst going parents in the world, some have. Believe me, I've been ministering for about three decades. Some of the parents are, you know, bad. But y'all, you all, most of you have got good parents, and they're good parents here, amen? They're good parents. But... God is going to change something, but you've got to keep your heart right. I mean, heart right with man and heart right with God. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Favor. God, I have favor from you and favor from man. Yeah. But when your heart is right, you will love people. Yeah. The more they persecute you, the more you get on your knees. I got certain people's names written down. And I take communion for them. I have to. <laughs> to stop the fiery darts. The flaming bizarres. <laughs> why, do you, why do you think you got a shield of faith? To talk about it? Yeah. Flaming bizarres, amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Haven't you, have you felt sometimes those daggers and swords going into you? Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, so, so many people I've, I've prayed for, you know, they, they actually said, I felt that dagger coming out when I pulled that thing right out of them. Yeah. Some people are so vicious, church. Death and life, blessings and cursings is in the power of the tongue. I'll talk a little bit about it. But we got something different today. Hannah has got an awesome testimony. We want to share that first and then we'll see how the Holy Spirit is going to take us. Amen. Yeah. Hello, I'm not sure. Hi, Jen. <laughs> um, this is just in regards to my children. I just want to start off that the f I'm starting to see the fruit in my labour in my children. And I don't know if anybody's, some of you have probably seen my testimony online in regards to the pain and the rejection that I went through in regards to relationships and as a teenager. And in my young adult years, well, I'm still a young adult, so. Um, <laughs> no longer going through any of that anymore, praise God. But um, I just want to pinpoint the last relationship that I had, which was with my children's father. And 
just to put a bit of a background on it, um, towards the end of the relationship, he'd end up cheated on me and then got that girl that he cheated on me pregnant. So I was pregnant and then his new partner was pregnant. So there's a difference between his two youngest by three months. And through that, um, I went through my pregnancy with my mother and I'm not going to name him, but he went and started a new family with another woman. And you could imagine the rejection and the pain that I went through in that. I passed that on to Grace, that rejection. And by the grace of God, that's now dealt with. But as I... I was on the prayer meeting yesterday and we were talking about... Um, well, I just had the Lord imprint on my heart that through my testimony, I didn't give this point of view. And I've been broken up with him for the past three years and the Lord has done a quick work, a quick work and a mighty work. And I just want to give him all the glory that I boast in my weaknesses. And so this was not a quick work in regards to the process of having to get here. So for the first year of that even nine months of being pregnant with grace and having to deal with that, I cursed him. I cursed him with my heart. I cursed him with my mouth. I cursed him with my actions. I walked around, even though I was back at church, under the ministry that I was, I could not let it go. I thought I did. I gave it all over. Lord, I forgive him. I let him go. It's a simple prayer. But it's so much deeper than that. And in that, the Lord, over that first year... I learned that to curse your children's father or mother is to curse your children. So how is God going to work through your children to anybody, including their parent, if you're going to continue to curse at the person that God put with you at the time? How is he going to bless your children if you're going to curse him? That's still their father. He hurt me. He did not hurt his children. And I feel like someone needs to hear that. You need to let it go. He did not hurt your children. He hurt you. And in that first year, I realised I've got to stop speaking over him that way, the way that I do. There was a transformation in that. But in the following years leading up, the Lord came down heavy on me after I thought, oh, yeah, I don't speak about him like that anymore. I'm dealing with it. I'm dealing with it. And then the Lord came down heavy one day and said, I hear your cursing in your heart. I hear that murmuring. I hear that complaining against him. Let him go. I didn't want to let go, unfortunately. In every part of, in my spirit, I did. I want to let go. I want to move forward in God. I want God. And I want to see the spirit in my children. And I want to see him do mighty things in my children. But how is he going to do that if I can't let their father go? So you think that it's a quick work. It's not. And it's a one level of glory to the next. And I can sit here today knowing that I've let him go and now seeing the fruit of my labour in my children that in those years that I was with him, I couldn't get through to him. No matter how much I talked about God and ministered to him, I was lost myself. I was coming from a broken place and unfortunately, if you hang around unbelievers and even be unequally yoked with them, they will drag you back into their sin. It's very unlikely that you're going to be dragged, you're going to be bringing them into church. You need to be careful. And I just thought the Lord bring that to me right now. And... In that, in saying that, I couldn't get to him. But over the course of this last year that the children have been going to their dads, there's been a reconciliation between me and their father. There's a friendship. There, we have been able to parent our children with respect and with love. And in that, I actually forgive him wholeheartedly. I love him with the love of the father. I want so much love for him. There's so much forgiveness. And if we can think about this, when have we not been led by our feelings and have fallen short of the glory? He doesn't even know God yet. We need to give the same grace that God has given us in those times that we fell. So if I look at it, right, it was even just this past week I pondered on it and it's when have we not all been led by our feelings? Have we not all been led in a point that 
he unfortunately got led by his feelings and started being attracted and feelings towards some other woman. And in that, I give him the grace because have like would we not want somebody to give us that grace? I forgive him. Yeah. I forgive him. Wouldn't you feel so sorry for him that he's lost? Yeah. And if he knew God, he wouldn't have done that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so my children go over there now and it he's seeing the transformation from black and white, yeah. night and day, that he'll put on his worldly music, rap, whatever you want to call it, and they'll go, let's put Jesus songs on. And he's messaging me saying, um, do you have any Jesus songs? <laughs> um, and in that, that's enough for me, but that's not even the biggest bit. There was a transformation in my children so much so that he needed to find out where they were getting it from. Two weeks ago, maybe, th- no, I'd say about a month ago, Pastor Yara gave a sermon which spoke right into his life. He ended up on Zoom and... He needed to know why, why his children were so... With the comparison of other children in the world and his family, there's these children walk into his household, these children, our children walk into his household, his parents' household, and there is a light about them. There is something different. They are kind. They are well-mannered. They are such servants of the living God and don't even realise it. I'm so proud of my children, who they are today because of God and the work that he's done in them. And he sees that. He sees the transformation and as he was on Zoom the other day, in that, Pastor Yara, he just happened to log on the perfect day where she spoke everything that was going on in his life. (laughs) And he was messaging me through the sermon. He goes, your pastor is saying everything going on right now. He was sobbing. He had goosebumps right down his body. There was heat rushing into his body. And praise God, praise God that he works through my children because I forgave him. I let him go. And it's forgiveness and letting go. Sure, for that other person, you want to let him go, but it's for you and your relationship with God. Why would you want to hinder that? Why let, why, if we're going to stand before God, we're not going to be worrying about what that person did to us like 20 years ago. You know what I mean? Holding onto a fence only hurts you, only hurts your inner body and it's, corrupting and eroding on the inside of you. I was living in so much pain, but there is such a freedom. And even this past month, I feel like God's brought me to another level of intimacy with him. I love him. I think he's, oh, I can't even, I don't have words. God is good. And in everything, I'm now seeing the fruit of my labour in my children because I let their father go. So I just wanted to share that as well. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. These testimonies need to go right around the nations, and it is gone right around the nations. I mean, the people on YouTube, someone is listening to these testimonies to see people set free. Amen. God wants to deliver us, set us free, and, and make us whole, that the river will flow. Amen. Fire, amen, so that one. When... Uh, Hannah and Adam, Adam, Adam is Adam here? Or is, he's at the barbecue, is he? I remember Hannah, I baptized her mom and dad in, in the, the former COC church here in Redcliffe, I don't know, many, many years ago, probably about 30 years ago or something. And Hannah, um, there was a time Hannah was pushed in a pram and I knew Hannah as a little baby. And just pushing, into, you know, dad and mom used to bring them into a church. And Hannah always, she shared, get a testimony, it's on YouTube, how she loved worship because her mom used to do worship at the COC church. Listen to that testimony and that dream was there in her heart. But in the last three and three years, she said three and a half years since COVID started, she started tuning into the transformation meetings and God has been working miraculously in her life and you could see the fruits of it. She was not even worshipping in this church. But we, give, we encouraged people to come out with songs during it and activated that gifting that she had as a little baby in the COC church so many years ago. And that gift came out and she's today, you, you see the worship this morning, she touches heaven. You know, but she came here as a very hurting girl, you know, I mean, in, into this place, you know, right through COVID. But I believe it's a transformation meeting 
it's important, church, that we break bread daily, every day. The earlier church, they were very close to Jesus and they, and they did the same thing that Jesus did. He was with them three and a half years. He followed, they, they followed him and they broke bread daily. Uh, actually, by doing it daily, because you, most of you know we've been having prayer meetings here for the last, not particularly in this building, when we started the church for 25 years. And knowing and seeing the transformation of Hannah and Mandela, Olivia, and there's so many people, Divas, you know, I mean, there's so many people. Um, uh, Eli, their, their lives, I mean, Eli, seven years ago, he was, he was going to commit suicide. He, he was brought up in a, a Pentecostal church. And when he rang me up, I took about one hour on the phone with him. And he gave up that demonic thing that was controlling him, and he came here. Seven years, God transformed his life in seven years. He, did, he couldn't drive a car. He's driving a car. A car was given to him in, in a way, and he got a job. He never worked all his life. It, now, and now he's got a partner, in, and she's tuned on there. I think she's there today, Joan. Um, you know, she's tuned, up, tuned into, into the transformation all the way from the Philippines. She gets up at 4 o'clock in the morning to get to our 6 o'clock prayer meeting. Let that digest a little bit, amen? She knows the importance of it, not because of Eli, but God touched her. You should see the transformation in her life, unbelievable transformation in her life. Her mother got healed, she got healed. Yeah, the first time she came on Zoom, Yara prophesied to her, there's something that she had, a headache or some pain, it just left her. Her brothers gave up on alcohol in the last couple of years. On, and this, this, is, this is happening every day. Going back to Hannah, it was just so awesome how God has changed and transformed her life. But if you listen to her testimony today, church, it's the pain. And, and Norm had thought so much about atonement. You can forgive with your lips. You can do all the lip service as much as you can for 30, 40 years. Because I'm ministering to Christians who have been Christians for 30, 40 years. I'm talking about Pentecostal who love the Lord, reading the Bible, going to church, prophesying. You can do all that. You can build even a mega church in Australia or somewhere around the world. But that pain will be still there. But she, she got a hold of the teachings of the church to get your cup clean on the inside. If your pain and your hurt is still there, someone, in her case was an ex-husband, but someone would have hurt you, a father, a ma mother, a brother, a sister, someone would have hurt you. In school, you know, there's so many testimonies, teachers, you know, negative thoughts, negative words. But it took her about a month to get rid of the pain and the hurt and the offense against that guy. As she did it, because particularly when you got pain in your life, and we all had pain in our life, all of us, if you did not have any pain in your life, you need to come right now to the altar quickly. I'll get that lying spirit out of you. <laughs> because I know, I've said this before, you guys have heard, I know what I went through when, in my life, and my children, I was, uns I was unsaved, unsaved, really unsaved. We talk about the other side of the fence, I was way on the other side of the fence. <laughs> So whatever the pain I had, I downloaded it onto my children. You know, and Hannah, Hannah, because she got a hold of what we said, you, you speak about somebody or you think about somebody or you murmur and mutter about the wrong because somebody have done you wrong in some time in life. Those who are listening on YouTube, if there is nobody here, somebody would have hurt you, but you need to let them go. And sometimes it takes months. When Norm, you got to go and listen to his whole message, church. You, we forgive with the lips. You can take them out fishing and catch a big fish. Yeah. Every time you talk about the fish, the fish gets bigger and bigger. Amen? <laughs> but you can, you can go and play cricket with them. You can do everything and you know, go on camping with them. But that pain is still there. Yeah. Someone around the world, you'll attract somebody who will come and touch that pain. And you will attract the same people and you're in a worse po place than what you were before. You always attract pain. Pain will attract pain. Birds of a feather that flock together. Amen? But thank God, because we have been saying it, if someone have heard you, particularly a husband or wife, you get on your knees and wear out that carpet, church. Because I know that I've downloaded stuff to my three children. 
I know. I know where I was when I was unsaved. I was not holy and pious. Jesus didn't die for a holy and a pious person. I know even after I got saved, I've fallen thousands of times. I'm not giving you the license and I'm not taking the license to fall. <laughs> you don't abuse God's grace. But to whom much is given, much is required. God requires a lot more from me. Amen? You need to get rid of it. And we have said it more times. I said, pray for that man. Pray for that woman who hurt you. Regardless of what. Because that children, you're cursing your own children. Because God created those children in, your, in that mother's womb. God used that husband or that wife to create that child. So you got an opinion about that about that husband or wife because of the cruelty or whatever they did or they are continuing to do, you are cursing your children. Hannah got the revelation of that and she said, I will not do that. But she spent, I mean, years actually to get rid of it. She prayed and prayed and prayed, but it's the pain, it's the hurt, church. And out of that pain is going to come curses out of your life. And if you read James, you will see about it very clear. It's a vicious evil that is coming out of your tongue. Mm-hmm. You bridle your tongue. It's interesting. It says, James says, bridle your tongue. You know, doesn't the bridle, bride got herself, get herself ready? Yeah. You bridle your tongue. That's a vicious evil. And he talks about training animals, church. You can train an animal. I mean, these are unsafe people around the world they are playing with snakes and with a cigarette on their mouth. They are unsafe people and they are in control of a snake or a python or a cobra or whatever it is. Or they can strain a, a tiger or, you know, unsafe people, they can master it, but the tongue is a vicious evil. It sets on fire, even a forest and even a big ship with a rudder. And you know, this, you go and read James and you will know what I'm talking about. So if you you can forgive the person and talk to the person and take them out for lunch and buy them chocolates and roses whatever it is but if you don't get rid of that pain you are keeping that curse and it will follow a generation this is the breakthrough that god is bringing that a generation of the upright will be blessed i'm talking about not just Ah, bless you, brother. I'm talking about the heavens open and pouring out a blessing that you will not have enough room to contain it. We have said it many a times, and Dick Rubin has said it, Norman has taught so many times, the, when the pattern is right, the glory will fall. But it, you know how many times have I said, get your cup clean? Because you will attract the same people and they will do the same thing to you and you will go from one, le- one level of evil to another. Not one level of glory to another, but evil to another. And you will attract them. So take time to deal with the offenses. I'm dealing with people after 30 years of offenses they have had. Remember that guy I prayed, uh, you know, I shared that testimony in America. He rang me up because his, uh, his, um, his sister was here. She was a nurse and I rang him up. Gary, I think his name was, rang him up because he fell from the balcony Uh, from the second story balcony or something, he fell and he ended up in hospital, broke a lot of his bones and in the hospital. So because she came here, because God says, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved. You and your household will be saved. Like Joseph's story. I mean, your brother, sister, everybody. I said, give me his call. I'll I'll, I'll call him in America. And I I got the guy on uh, on the phone. He was in the hospital, a lot of pain and, you know, broken bones and they were working out the operations and different things they had to do to him. And I knew his history about his father because I was ministering to the sister here. uh, He was an alcoholic and different things. But he felt after cutting a long story short, this demonic thing came out of him because he said it. He said something, I had this for 30 years and it left me. He was just about to jump off that bed, church. God totally delivered him. This is a telephone call from here to America in a, in a sick bed, a guy who fell. The reason I rang him up, because it's not a blessing to fall from a balcony. And God has given you and me the power to break the curse that he fell off the balcony. That's why I rang him. Okay, that's the reason I rang. But I didn't know the whole story. But God, later on, when after I got off the phone and his pain left and he, he come good, I asked his sister, what happened 30 years ago? And she said this. She said she was in another state praying for the family 
the power of the Holy Ghost came upon her and she started praying for her family, not knowing 30 years ago at that time uh, what was happening. And later on, she found out that the, the father had the, a gun lined up to the mother and the other brother. And this guy, Gary, who fell from the balcony, lined up a gun and pulled the trigger at the same time. And nothing happened. Because she was praying so many miles away for the family. And the father looked at him, ah, Gary, is that you? He dropped the gun and he left. Church, he had that for 30 years, that grief, that offense, because his, he, was a, he, was a, he was a little kid then at that time, for his father to put him into a place like that, and he was paralyzed and traumatized for 30 years, and the devil wanted to kill him, church, by dropping him off the balcony. It's the devil that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, this is the good news. The reason I rang him, that Jesus said he comes, that you will have life, Gary, and have it more abundantly. That's the calling of God in this church. To heal the brokenhearted, to set the captive, not to build churches and lead people to the Lord. You can't lead a rat to the wall, to the Lord. <laughs> and lead it to the wall, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Salvation belongs to the Lord. Amen. He'll use a donkey, amen. That doesn't mean to say you don't save people and, and minister to God, feeding the poor, do all those things that you need to do. But make sure that wound in your heart is being healed. Yeah. It's interesting that, that, that you can tame wild animals and tigers and lions and lepers. You can tame them, but to tame that tongue. You know why, church? Because of what's happening on the inside. As Hannah shared, it's the pain and the offense that is in there. You need to get to God and spend hours and hours and hours with God because you spend hours and hours and hours nursing it, cursing it, and raising it, and cursing that man continuously. She cursed him out of the house. You get the revelation of that one. You, you actually, any death and life, church, that's blessings and cursings is in the power of your tongue. It's not just controlling it. Um, I want to say something, but I won't say it. <laughs> you're, you're dying on the inside. You know, you, you know, the, you know you, Hannah shared with me, it's, it's your kill, you're killing yourself. How many times have we shared it? If you don't forgive, you're drinking poison, hoping that that person is dying, and you're getting your tumors on the inside. <laughs> Write that one down. Stick it on the fridge, church. Amen. That bitterness is growing there, so you're biting your lips. <laughs> um, you smile on your face. You're forcing a smile out. Fakies, get the fakey stuff out, church, and be real to God, because he can see right through you and right through me right now. You, you can't hide from him, church. He's here 24-7, seven, seven days a week. He's there. He's looking at you. He wants your cup clean that the river will flow and the nations will come to Jesus. Church, you know, I'm so blessed. It's not only you guys just listening to it. There are thousands listening to our messages now across the nations. And Hannah's message, thousands and thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of people are going to set their husbands and their past relationships and their friends and their mothers and fathers free today in Jesus' name. That cancer is leaving your body right now in Jesus' name. It's leaving you, that pain, that arthritis, that is due to bitterness, it's leaving you right now. That bitterness is leaving you right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Just receive the blood of Christ right now. Thank you, Lord, that that DNA is changing. Wow. Wow. Shakarama Sundere Taki and Amarambai. Who wants a DNA change today? Glory to God. Shakarama Sandara. It's the blood that sets me free, church. Nothing. It's the blood that sets Sahana free. Why did we take communion for 25 years? We've been running the church every day in the morning. Because it's the blood of Christ that does the work, church. We break bread daily. Because we are coming into intimacy and relationship. And that's another thing that Norma, Norma is with. It's intimacy. It's relation. It's koinonia. You, you, yes, you can forgive. You can do the lip service. 
How many people have come, come to me and said, yeah, I, I've forgiven them. I've done, it. I've, I've done it to them. But when they see them, man, this something rises up on the inside. <laughs> or they, won't, they don't want to pass, go on their path. If they see them for a way, they go that way. <laughs> Some people, you don't want to even go close to them anyway. <laughs> man, <laughs> you don't want to go close to them. Use a lot of wisdom, amen? If somebody is killing you, don't go and put your hand in the lion's mouth and tell him not to bite it. That is called stupidness, amen? So keep away, run away, amen? But I do believe this church with every fiber of my being that if we can get this thing right, what we are talking about, we won't have COVID-19 in Australia or anywhere around the world. I believe this. We won't have wars in Ukraine and Russia. You know, or, or the big thing is go and save, build mega churches and build this and run Sundays, this school, that school, Bible college. And you, wow, you know, the scripture is flowing out of you. How is your cup? They did it all, church. They did everything. Everything right, the Pharisees and the scribes. They kept the feast up to the dot, the Passover feast. You know how we used to do the Passover here? They kept it all. They knew how to do it. And Jesus says, you look like white forced tombs on the outside. But inside, you're full of dead man's bones and uncleanness. So you keep the feast. I fed the poor. I led so many people to the Lord. You didn't lead anything to the Lord. It's not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. So when the cup, cup is clean, church, then the pure. You know, James also talks about don't let sweet and bitter. He's talking to born again, spirit filled people. He's talking to me today. He's talking to this message is for me as well. It's, it's not, not hard to get offended. Believe me, run a church for 25 years and find out. Some people don't last that long. <laughs> they got their wives and their, themselves and their children in mental homes. Because of the venom that is coming out of some Christians. Pray for those churches that are fallen and those pastors. Because you do not know what they went through, like Hannah's testimony and Olivia's testimony. You get on the website and listen to the testimony and see what God is doing. Or we get 10 steps of discipleship. <laughs> this is the way to do it. I'll teach you to baptize, marry, bury. <laughs> this is the song you got to sing. There is a song that has to come from here, church. You know why that song is coming from here? Because of the ruts you went through. Hannah can sing and worship God. If anybody comes and says, Hannah, she's a good worshiper, she's not just worshiping God because everybody worships God. They're worshiping God. They're singing nice songs and not good top-class musicians around the world. Because of what she went through, I will bless the Lord at all times. And she knows her children are going to follow and a thousand generations are going to be blessed. That's a good enough reason for her to worship God now. Not because a song leader comes here and say, come on, let us worship Jesus. So they come and worship Jesus. I sing a song. <laughs> do it anyway in the way you want to do it. But we want fragrance to come up. You know, we have been teaching about fragrance. We, we want a sweet-smelling fragrance to come out here. Why are you worshipping him? You read the psalmist and you see, church, what, you know, because they had the victories, they started worshipping God. And they worshipped God for previous victories because when they send the worshippers before, the battle was won and it took three days to get the plunder. Glory! 
That's the kind of worship that God wants, church. He wants a worship that will open the heavens and destroy. Our fight is not against flesh and blood. They destroyed themselves, but our fight is not against flesh and blood. God knows how to take their demons out of them. He's a master. <laughs> you got to have the confidence, church, when your cup is clean. You know, when I rang that guy in America, I knew the curse was going to be broken, but I didn't know what curse was, because, but I knew when she said he fell off the balcony, it was a curse. Is it a blessing to fall off a, off a balcony? Uh, you choose which one. Which one are you going to hold? Uh, maybe he made an accident. Or the railing was not screwed up properly. It got nothing to do with the railings. They will go to a loose railing when a curse is being spoken. The devil knows how to walk his tread. Some of you don't even understand what I'm saying, but in the middle of the night, you're going to get up and say, yeah, the penny dropped. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> watch what you say, church. Actually, watch what you think. I know Christians who have never used the word curse, but they curse me rotten. I know their names. Uh, don't worry. Don't worry about it. Amen. They did it for thousands of years. Nothing new under the sun. Church, anything you go and speak about someone else, this is for me, this is for you, because I'm working on the Anything you go and say, oh, what, what did he say? What do you think about what he said? <laughs> because they have been thinking because it's the same demon. Familiar. Family spirits. You go to Africa, you find the same thing. Oh, yeah, my mommy's here. No, <laughs> you recognize the spirit. And they recognize you. They will find you. Oh, people leave their jobs and leave their marriages. Go to California, open the suitcase. The problem is still there. How far am I going to go with this one? I mean... <laughs> But I want to pray that God will break off, that you will. I know most of you, even people listening to me on YouTube and on Zoom right now, I know God speaks when we only, <laughs> it's interesting. That guy, she started praying for him. The little girls, how, how old are your children, Anna? Two and three years old. She said, I don't want to listen to this music. I want to listen to Jesus music. I mean, as a pastor, I'm the best pastor and the blessed pastor in the entire world. A two and three year old is telling the heathen father, <laughs> Sekerama Sundara Bakandara, there is something more great we want to worship on. Amen. Semora Batukane Nenai. The power of God that he got onto you. What, is, what are my children learning? <laughs> A child will lead them, the Bible says. Out of your children, oracles are going to flow. God is going to bless you, Hannah. Don't be jealous of Anna, Hannah, by the way. Don't be jealous. She paid the price. We ministered to her. Tamari spends a lot of time with Tamari because she's a very good counselor, Tamari. Don't rush and make appointments. She's having a holiday at the moment, right? Because <laughs> everybody got something wrong with them. But... Useless spending hours. She has spent hours and hours and hours, but they never want, they want to spend hours with God. Even all the God got the promise for Abraham, Isaac had to dig his own well. Is that right? Yeah. Now, I, I know her grandfather, not her, her dad. I mean, Adam is here right now, but, and her mom and dad have been serving and obviously praying for her as a little girl, but I know her grandfather. They used to come to this church as well. So there is a generational blessing down the line. But Hannah had to pay the price. So all she came in under the anointing, when the pattern was right, bang, the glory fell. But she's got to continue to keep her cup clean. Okay. The, the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence. Can you guard Yara's heart and my heart? So I can't do it to you too. Because seven more demons can come in too. 
Jesus said it. This is Gospels. When the unclean spirit come now, they go and look for their bodies. They've got a conversation. They can see. They can look. How the demons? Interesting, but God's spirit too also was there, isn't it? When God said, where are you, Adam? He didn't say God in a flesh. It's in a spirit. He knew him in the spirit. So the demons also know to go and get another few bodies. They know your house is clean. And they know that if you don't keep that cup clean and continuously, read the word continuously in the Bible, keeping your cup clean. Not when you fall down, you got a financial issue, you know, something happened to your children, ring the pastor. No, ring Jesus first. The pastor could be busy praying for somebody else. Don't worry, 25 years I've done it to you guys. Give the Lord a clap for that one. And I'll continue to do so. Because we do daily prayed. You can switch on. I practice what I preach, by the way, YouTube people. <laughs> to God be the glory. Amen. Great things he has done. Man, this, 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 is, this is just outstanding what God is doing, church. There are other testimonies. There's so many that... You know, you heard about Warren the other day and Mandela. And, I mean, the intercessory prayers that is happening. And Mandela's life has been transformed and changed since COVID. And the three children are singing melodies. Those children are going to transform a school. Watch out, church. You know, God, God honors his word thousands of years later, isn't it? He, he honors his word. His word is always the same. He's the promise keeper. I said he's the promise keeper. If you've got a child or a grandchild, you continue. Get Yara's message on Thursday. Now, please get this message because this message is still talking to me. Because it's talking to me right now, I'm going to talk to you about what's talking to me. Her message, church, was outstanding. I was sitting right at the back there and I was receiving every word. If you want that message, Call me or send me a message. Don't call me. Send me a message. <laughs> and if you've got um, WhatsApp, I can send it to you because it's about 30 minutes or something. Church, one of the things she said, not stop praying for your children. And it, and it came to me about um, uh, St. Augustine. Augustine. His mother prayed for nine years for a guy who was involved in everything. Nine years. And he prayed. He, I was, tears were pouring and starting to pour before I even tell you the story. For nine years, and this guy was involved in all sorts of stuff and prayed for him. And, and Yara read the story. Is, uh, what I remember is that as if a child had died that she prayed for nine years. And nine days before she passed away. He gives his heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. And she didn't live to see the impact of her nine years prayers on that guy's life. If you've got a son or a daughter or a grandchild or anyone, you keep on praying, church. I don't care what they're up to, what they're saying, what they have been taught, what their patterns are, what their theories are. There is a promise for you. You and your household will be saved. That is not dragging yourself to church and I did my Sunday bit. We do sa Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Because Jesus didn't come for Sunday bit. And I, I did this thing for Jesus. Some of you can't log on to the prayer meetings, so don't get condemned. I don't, I don't use witchcraft, okay? I'm only, I'm only telling you about what can I do? She prayed for nine years. You, you, there's so many testimonies, church. We have shared it before as well. Um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Steve Hill. His mother prayed for many years, drug addict. He was involved in everything. Oral Roberts, I shared it before. His son, Richard Roberts, God he used, he used him for 40 nations around the world because his mother prayed. He was chased 
Steve, Steve Hill touched millions. I think five million people were affected. He, he was one of the main uh, men of God that God used. So if you've got a son and a daughter, there is a calling of God. If you're listening to me, don't destroy the call. Hannah got what we said. You know, I, we used to see her occasionally in the last verse, since I seen her in the pram. Occasionally we used to see her because she used to work at the leaks club, when we go there, we occasionally see her, but she never came to church just before Zoom that she came in and God transformed her life. And God, God can transform anyone at the sound of my voice right now because he's no respecter of person. So don't be jealous, church, because jealousy is murder. If you even have a little bit of that jealousy, you better get it out today. I'll help you. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Your day is going to come. <laughs> okay. God, every, every, God loves us. But you know what God is doing, church? I'm excited. The intercessors, the, the deliverance. He's bringing a body of people together. And I believe that mil, billion souls are going to come at this time into the kingdom of God. Because once the cup is clean, the glory will fall and revival, the atmosphere will change. The climate in Australia is going to change. Not only because we are praying here, we have been doing it. Maybe there is thousands of other churches that have been doing it, but we are linked up in the spirit. I mean, some of them could be lukewarm, whatever, but God can make them hot today. Can God make these other churches hot today? Yes. Come on, Barry. Yes. Yeah. Bridle the tongue, bridle, bride, bride. You know, God said, don't leave Jerusalem till I baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. You know, Holy Ghost and power, he said, right? What happened when the fire came? Tongues of fire, summer, tardi, akana, bakonde. Tongues of fire, church. Sema, rotinga, tekele, tombara, katanga. Because they heard, but he said, don't leave Jerusalem till you are empowered from high, church. Bridle that tongue and watch God move, church. Shakaraba, you want to stand up, please? Thank you, Lord. I'm going to pray for all those on Zoom and YouTube right now. Let God bridle your tongue today. Karabas Samba. And any offense or any pain, past relationships, husbands, wives, fathers, mothers, brothers, sisters, whatever, whoever it is. You know, people you have sold your soul to. Because that's, a, that's another big one, church. Because Hannah, when you, when you go into the altar and you look at their eyes and you say, till death do us part. You know, you, you look at their eyes. You look, the eyes are the windows of your soul. You sold your soul. And in the pain, your soul is connection. But because she spent time for the wound, she disconnected the connection and got the royal connection, church. That's the blood, the royal blood. Your DNA is going to change today if you get what I'm saying. Sabarama toti nemele karia. There are people that you have gone, you have had intimacy, you have given your soul. Don't give your soul to a man or a woman. Because of marriage, you fight to keep that marriage. Give your soul to the king of kings and let him come into the center of your heart. Then your marriage will be the best marriage and the best children and the best grandchildren. And a thousand generations will be blessed at the Lord. You can't put this fire off, church. It's going to burn. Burn, Lord, burn. Burn within my soul. Lord, you know those times that they have nursed things, cursed things, Lord, rears things, things that have happened even recently with people, bosses, people you're working with. You know, some people, you, it's impossible to work with them. Have you found all easy people to work with? Sometimes it is impossible. Even Paul said, deliver me from certain people, didn't he, in the Bible? Right. He said, as much as you can, be at peace. As much as you can, sometimes you can't. Have you experienced it? But pray for them, okay? We are not fighting against flesh and blood. If you are fighting, regardless of how bad, I mean, Hannah was a wounded girl when she came. She was wounded, there was bleeding. 
She was lost. She was hurting. You know, I mean, imagine what she shared today. Any person goes through some such, you know, you, you sell your soul to them. You give your soul to them. And, and, they, and they really distorted you. A trust. She can't put a trust. She can't trust anyone. But one thing that she came to Jesus and he will never let her down. That's why her worship has come into a level. So there are levels of worship church you and I have not touched yet, but that is subject to change. I mean, today, tomorrow, next week, next year, two years from now, we are touching something now that we can touch heaven and change earth. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, you, you reveal those areas, those days, those moments, Lord, the bitterness, the anger, Lord, against their fathers, mothers, Lord, friends, husbands, wives, Lord God, today, Lord, put love in their heart, Lord. They cannot do it, Lord. Hannah couldn't do it, Lord. Put love in their heart and give them the grace to release and forgive them right now. That they can put all that, just say, Lord, I put all bitter root judgment. I put it to the cross, Lord. You know, Lord, what I've been through. I cannot do this, Lord. I refuse, Lord. To do lip service. I want the pain. I want the hurt. I want the offenses to go, Lord. I want my cup to be clean on the inside, Lord. Put love in my heart. Give me the grace, Lord, as I forgive that person. My mommy, my daddy, my husband, my wife, my friend, people around me, Lord. Church people. Pastors, I put all bitter root judgment. I put it to the, to the cross, Lord. I put it to death today. They owe me nothing, Lord. Decree it, church. They owe me nothing. Because you, Lord, was marred beyond human recognition. You did it for me, Lord. They owe me nothing. Because you love them too, Lord. You bled for them. You suffered for them. You died for them. And I will not curse, Lord, something that you are blessed in Jesus' name. I release it, Lord. Forgive me, Lord, for allowing others to be offended and giving poison to others. From this day on, Lord, I take it all to you, Lord. And I put it at the cross in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Change me on the inside. Wash me. Cleanse me, Lord. Cleanse me with your blood. In Jesus' name. You know, Lord, the cups I have drunk off. I renounce the cup of the devil. Every criticism, mockery, laughter, jesters, Lord, anger, hatred, bitterness, unforgiveness, death and hell. I command you, come out of me now and leave me in Jesus' name. I renounce the cup of the devil and I drink of your cup, Lord. The cup of the new and everlasting covenant. Your blood, Lord, is inside of me and all over me right now. I am redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I am redeemed and I know I am, Lord, that all that contamination is leaving me now, Lord, and I receive the precious blood of Jesus Christ that there is a DNA change today in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The royal blood, the covenant-keeping blood for thousands of generations in the name of Jesus. Give the Lord a clap, church. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.